Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! The great poet Isaac Watts once scribed, How doth the little busy bee improve each shining hour and gather honey all the day from every shining flower. And on and on and on. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. This would be my jolly butler, Livingston, and this sight for sore eyes over here, which is often the cause of sore eyes amongst her numerous victims, is the dainty and delicate dame of Polter Manor, the adorable Miss Tangella. And have we a most phenomenally superb program in store for you tonight. First up, we have such a fabulous guest that we have no doubt you will absolutely... Note, guest cancelled, thought he was supposed to appear on the Joe Bob show, changed his mind. What a load of cack. And, and who in God's name is Joe Bob? I have it, the Foggians. Well, I'm not doing another bloody feckless family night. Tangella, go off and fetch me a guest. I care not whom. Use your dot gun if necessary. Oh, don't you dare look at me like that. I have no intention of spending another night attempting to present a program while that one sits in the chair and makes faces without ever saying a word whilst you complain the entire time, followed by the handyman droning on and on and on about Victorian plumbing. All simply because we were stepped over for another show hosted by the much ballyhooed Joe Bob. I'll interview the bloody mailman if I must. Just as use aside, we have a fun movie loaded upon the projector, which I have little doubt you'll thoroughly enjoy. The Savage Bees from 1977, starring an entire menagerie of stars whom you'll likely recognize, but whose names will probably escape you. This tale revolves around the deadly aspect of Africanized or killer bees. This was the first of many films to cover this topic and caused quite the stir at the time, as it was based on a rather realistic and existing premise. The mere concept of which frightened quite a few people at the time, much like the movie Jaws. Perhaps more so, since one can avoid great white sharks by staying out of the ocean. Bees are a somewhat rather more difficult nuisance to avoid. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of Brother Buzz Fright, right here on Creature Features! She might come back with a fishmonger, you know. I'm sure our viewers would enjoy that. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. It's that time of the week that you and I both love, and uh, I think our guest tonight does not love it. No. So, if I might explain for a moment, um, we had one guest who was supposed to come, and he opted not to come. He said he he opted to do a show called Joe Bob. Have you seen this show called Joe Bob? 
So uh, yeah. anyways, I sent Tangela off to get a guest, and I thought she'd come back with a mailman or something. And instead, she came back with our neighbor, John Provost, yeah, yeah, yeah. who was on Lassie. You uh, did the Lassie uh, show. Uh, uh, you know, I cannot understand a word you're saying uh, with that uh, tape uh, on your mouth. Uh, Tangela, uh, don't uh, you know me? Take the tape off his mouth. Uh, uh, no. My goodness, do you see what I have to contend with in this oh. madhouse? Ow. Hello, John. Why did I move here? Because he wanted a nice home in the country. You want to be near us. I have a nice home in the country. It's my, it's, Vincent, it's not my, it's not you. It's Tangella. I've tried to be nice. You know, she only ties up the people she likes. <sighs> Well, I'll tell well, you in a moment. Like you. You, I just want to make sure you're not leaving. Will you stay and be a guest for the rest of the night? Yes. All right. Well, I'll tell you in a moment. In any case, uh, welcome to the show. Long time mm. no see. How have you been? Oh, just great. Yeah, thank you. No, um, we're going to feed you popcorn and we're going to show you a wonderful film, The Savage Bees. I Sounds better than this. You've seen The Savage Bees, have you not? They're... Africanized bees, I right, think. Right, right. Yeah. No, no, they are, they are, they went to Africa and they hung out and then learned poor behavior and came back to America. <laughs> like to make, Tangella. To bad her. No, well, she's. Poor behavior. I have yeah. no explanation for her. No, I think, I think something happened when she was a small girl. I think she, she, she murdered her entire family. I'm not entirely sure yet, but it's, <sighs> a, it's a possibility. You never know. Okay, Any case, well. Let's I start this movie. We'll get you untied, and when we come back, we're going to find out what you're up to, right? Okay, sounds great. Thanks. All right, off we go. The Savage Bees, 1977. Fun times ahead. Don't go away. Confirmation from the owners. SS Carlina Rios expected New Orleans this date 1000 local, coming from Brazil, Central America. Small reefer, 700 tons, Captain Equary, crew of 10. They want to know how many survivors. So do I. You're telling me my first mate and quartermaster have disappeared? Yes, sir. Where? Only one answer overboard. Coast Guard Cutter Point Spencer. Request permission to come alongside. and the quartermaster were at the bow. We were in forward steering because from the bow to the bridge is more than an eighth of a mile. They were all the way across on the wrong side of the channel. Why? Something happened. Something strange. The last thing I could make out from the mate was a kind of 
cry, scared and muffled, like he had something in his mouth. Get away, he said. Get away. From what? Don't know. Don't think I want to know. Still give the men shore leave, Captain. No, feed them. Then I want every available hand topside on lookout. We've still got two men out there. Mardi Gras and no Mardi Gras. Julie, you put that away and get yourself over to the church. My mom's scared. Of course you are, baby. It's only natural. You got a pretty voice. All you got to do is practice. Now go on. And mind that dress. Yes, Mom. to New Orleans. During Mardi Gras? That coroner is going to do an autopsy. We're going to have Zeth's blood analyzed to find out what kind of poison killed him. Then I'm coming back here and take every store in this Delta apart till I find out who bought that poison. I'm going to feed them some of it. Close to the bank. Yes, I see it. Rig out the launch.
Sheriff, I am not going to tell you this again. Would you take this thing off my desk? Drop it, sir. This man wants us to do an autopsy on a dog. It's not a dog, it's my dog. And? And what? And what makes you think we should do this for you when we don't do it for the man on the street? Because you're the sheriff? Because he was poisoned, that's why. Well, a lot of dogs get poisoned, Sheriff. Well, look, I didn't mean to bully you, but... I'd sure appreciate it if... If you could help me. Just how old are you, anyway? 31. Isn't that kind of young to be the coroner? I'm not the coroner. I'm the assistant M.E. I'm stuck here on this terrific holiday. Your friendly neighborhood just made the great doctor. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Doc? Well, very few of my patients ever complain. Did you see the transport of this body yourself? We'll do our best. If there's any problem, we'll call you. All right, fair enough. We'll alert the morgue and let them know you're on your way. In your opinion, uh, would you say this man died from drowning? No. His face and hands are covered with some kind of rash or sores. All right, thank you for your cooperation. Out. Morgue line's busy, sir. Keep trying. Hold the crew, Chief. Animals approximately five years old. Six. Correction, six years old. External evidence indicates toxic paralysis. Eyes and head very puffed, even disfigured. Close examination reveals Funny. What? Where you live, do you have any prickly plants and nettles? Yeah. Got some bushes around there with thorns on them. They grow wild. My wife knows the name of them. I, I could call her. Well, wait a minute, we'll see what we've got. Well, you can forget about calling your wife. It's a stinger. Insect. You mean some kind of bugs killed Zeph? <clears throat> you really want to watch this? Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. You know, I can get you some ointment or something for that. Actually, the blood has started to flow oh, again. Good. She was really tight. I mean, you've yeah. got to... Well, she's she's good at taking hostages. Uh, I think she went to university for taking hostages. I could be wrong, but no, well, I seem to she remember. She probably this. got an A. She would. No, yeah. no. Welcome back to the show. We are watching the Savage Bees with our good friend and neighbor John Provost, actor extraordinaire. Right, have you been Thank acting you. at all lately? Well, I just I am the voice of a robot. The voice of a robot? Yes, his name is Spark, and it's a movie coming out in a couple months. Oh, wonderful. Yes, it's called Colonials. Colonials. And I'm a, a robot. A ro tell, do the voice. 
well, the, I am, that's me, the voice. Oh, you mean it's your, your natural voice? Pretty much, So you yes. do not go it's like, not, I'm, I'm not crush, like this. kill, I'm not, I don't, destroy. I don't have a British accent. That, was that British? I don't, no, 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 but I mean, no, no, no. You, you are not doing like a, pro, is it processed? Like, did they run it through a machine to make it sound like your mole? Actually, mechanical? when we were recording the voice, they did it with three different microphones. So they could, he, the technician said they could blend the different sounds that you get from the different microphones. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I can't wait technique. to see it. No, they adopted that for music recording. We do this, ah. we do this in the studio all the oh, time. Well, that makes sense. Right. Because they right. had a lapel, a broadcast mic, and then a shotgun mic. Oh. All in the same, so all at once. You get yeah. the best of all the worlds. I, it's, mm. Like I said, it's new to me, yeah. but I'm thrilled, yeah. and it. Uh, it's it's for fun. the like the wall of sound effect. Yeah, Phil that Spector. Was big. That was big. That. Right. That well, was big let's thing. not talk about yeah. Well, Phil Spector. No, that was Phil his Spector. career before. Okay. Yes. Yeah. True. Before he became true. a madman. Yes. This movie. He's excellent. Yeah. Savage Bees. So. Uh, down in your garden, he lives mm -hmm. what? Just a stone's, kilometer, a stone's throw. A kilometer away. from us. Yes. Uh, do you have killer bees in your garden? I have. I have a small orchard, right? And I have noticed a lot of bees there lately, but I haven't ventured out. But have any actually murdered you? No. All right. No. No. I haven't so been stung yet. You probably do not have killer bees, which is good. Well, thank you. Yes, no, no. I'd rather so, not. So, so. Tangella tried to create these Africanized bees using American honeybees, but she made the mistake of using Dutch on the other bees. And now mm. they're actually quite mellow bees. We have mellow bees, so if you need some mild mellow bees. Let's mix them with the Africanized bees. ones. Yeah, the savage bees. This is beginning I'm, to sound like the, the United you know, Nations of bees. Right? Yeah. I guess. Anyways, uh, movie's fun, uh, African bees, and uh, we should go find out what's I, happening next, th right? That poor dog. Yeah. Maybe. And you know me and dogs. No, I know, but I don't that think the dog sad. did it. I think it was one of the sailors on the ship. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. Let's find All right. out. Off we right. go. Back to the Savage Bees, 1977. We will be back after uh, mail, I think, right? We're going to send you away, and then we're going to okay. do mail, and then we'll have John back. See you soon. What time is it? And I'll bet you've got the wrong number. It's Jeff. Oh, this better be good. Well, I didn't want to call you anymore. You didn't want me to. No, you obviously have no idea how much I don't want to hear your voice. I think I get the picture. So? Jenny, I'm on duty. All I need from you is a technical opinion. Oh, I'm glad you're disturbing my sleep for the use of my brain instead of my- Jenny. Could bees kill a dog? What? Could bees kill a dog? Well, they could, but they wouldn't. Well, they did. Just bees? Just bees. What, did the dog get into the hive and start eating the honey? No. There was no hive near where they found it. So what makes you so sure it was bees? Because the dog's stomach was filled with them. Do you have a specimen of these bees that killed the dog? Dozens. I'll be in my laboratory in an hour. Same one? Yeah. Not everything's changed. Doctor, I hate to interrupt you again, but you're the only one here. It's all so irregular. I don't know what gets into people. You have to have paperwork when you go to the mall. There's a death certificate, then there's a police clearance, and then the bees... <laughs> yours? Not anymore. You have to fill out some papers. Anything you say, Doc, as long as we don't have to keep it. You know how it happened? Nobody knows for sure. Sure?
scariest, most frightening thing I ever heard. But. But? What but? Look, you guys are right. These bees could be a disaster. But what do you want from the police department? Well, the coroner's office reports to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm reporting. What, Panic? Yeah. It's Brown again. Tell him no. Look, report to somebody else. Go over my head. Deputy Mayor Pellegrino will be here this afternoon. Oh, this afternoon? Yeah. Well, the bees have already killed possibly 13 people. Now, don't you think they should be protected, people? And warned, don't you think? Come on, this is Mardi Gras. Look, I'd like to help, but I can't take the risk. I can't take the responsibility of panicking everybody over something I can't do anything about. As soon as Mardi Gras is over, I'll give you all the help I can. Right now, I'd get some proof if I were you. Documented proof. You're gonna need more than two glass jars full of bees and some hearsay. No offense, McHugh, but I mean, you don't know for sure those bees are out there killing people, do you? Just how many dead people would you like for proof? Listen, McHugh. How many bees are there? We don't know. Where are they? We don't know that either. You see? Look, I believe you. But I got no men to spare. Document it. And then we'll take it from there. Lieutenant? Yeah. Brown and Seth. Tell him no. N-O. No is no. Back to square one. Yeah. What about you? Who, me? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Forget about it? Dive into the magic of Mardi Gras. All the horns and hats, booze, ladies. Don't tempt me. I don't know. Are you? Who? I'm going down two lane. Get these analyzed. Well, you can go out to Paris and Look for those bees. I like your first idea better. Looking for those bees on our own is crazy. Now, why should we? Well, because <clears throat> we is about all we got. You in? Yeah, I'm in. That's good. Standard Italian specimen, and your bee. Similar in all major aspects. Antennae, 12 major segments. Mandible normal. Proboscis, a little mangled, but looks the same. Stinger missing. Try this one. Same sort of mangling, missing stinger. What makes you think there's something special about this one? Well, this one came from the stomach of a man. Jeff, you said a dog. That was the other one. The man was stung hundreds of times, maybe a thousand. There was enough toxin in him to kill an elephant. Jeff, there are bees that can kill an elephant. But not bees like that in North America. Yeah, well, the victim was a made off a freighter that collided with a banana boat. There's 11 crew still missing from a banana boat and one from the freighter. Banana boat from where? Brazil. Right. We call it the National Bee Stock Center. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features 
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. I thought you burned that thing long ago. She seems to have rescued it somehow. Yuck. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we are watching the Savage Bees, if you're just joining us, and our guest has enjoyed. You know, he's not really a guest tonight now, is he? He's against his will. He's against his will. Now, there's, there's a play on words there. I don't know what it is. Anyways, uh, we're going to do some mail while John stepped away for a moment. But uh, how are you two doing? I'm concerned about the kidnapping. You know, I think he's 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 gotten over it. Hmm. Now, at first, the whole duct tape thing was probably a bit painful, but uh, now he's all right. Anyway, so uh, we need to do some mail because we went to the post office yesterday, and there's quite a bit, right? Yes. More than what you're holding right now. More than this. Quite a bit, but we're going to do the best of them for now because you sent them to us, this and we have from to read them. Pleasanton with a picture of Debbie Harry. Debbie Harry. This is Blondie. This is not Debbie Harry. The name of the group is Blondie. Her no, name this is, is Debbie Harry. No, this is Blondie, and the name of your hairdresser is Debbie Harry. All right, I'm going to try to put a big one up here soon, but uh, this is from Eric in Pleasanton, and he, look, it says Blondie right there. Blondie. That's the name of the band. Oh, he's such an expert on rock and roll, is he not? All right, Eric in Pleasanton says, Dear Creature Features... Really enjoyed 102321 showing the people. That was, uh, you know, I thought everyone was going to hate that film. I apologized at the commencement because I thought people would hate it. We've gotten so many nice notes. All right, showing of the people in 1972. Your team has it down. Beauty, brains, and brawn. I hope I don't have to say who is which. Okay, Eric and Pleasanton. Well, she's obviously the brawn. Obviously. And you're obviously the brain, so that leaves beauty for me. Oh, dear. Right? Now, well, you, don't, you can't be the brain because he thinks this is a woman named Debbie Harry. Blondie. Blondie. If you say so. Blondie. San Jose. You know, she had, she had her own cartoon show at one time. What? She had her own cartoon show. Her last name is Bumstead. Elliot to Boris, is that right? I San Jose, so. another California? Yes. Do you know the way to San Jose? All right, uh, dear Creature Features, I was hit by a car October 9th, 2020. Ooh, this is not a fun way to begin a correspondence. No, it's not. I hope it was not your car. I woke up from a coma on Halloween day. That's when I watched my first Creature Feature. Since then, I'm a fanatic of your show. You play the best classics. I now consider you, Tangela, and Livingston as my friends. Much love and respect, Elliot. Well, you are our friend as well, Elliot. We're glad you're better, it seems. And, uh, you know, this is how people find out about our show. They go into a coma, wake up in a hospital room, and the only thing they can watch is bloody television. Perhaps. Yeah, you know, I bet Joe Bob did not have to go through this. I, I bet Joe Bob's viewers do not have to have a coma to discover him. We should I, look into that. I All right. don't know Thanks who for that writing, is. Elliot. Hope things are going well. I don't know who hmm? that is. This is from New Jersey. New Jersey? Is it from Creep? I don't believe so. What, you're going to make me open this? Have it you not inspected? Oh, uh, you've inspected it. All right. Yes. Oh, it looks like children's treats. That must be for you. I shall read what appears to be... Halloween card? Take a guess. Color. Venture a wager that it's a Halloween card. We already saw the mail, so we, we are can't a bet behind. on mine. All right. This is from Jason T, and you said he's from New Jersey? New Jersey. Jason T goes, dear creature features, please find and close some finger puppet pals for Tangella. Oh, they're like little rubber finger puppets. Rubber puppets. Oh, how wonderful. You know, I'll probably play with those more than she will. Uh, it is my hope that they distract her long enough for Andrew 
to find a hiding place. You know, he's got his own room down in the cellar. It's not the cellar. What do you call the end of the house? The dungeon. Well, it's not the dungeon. We have no torture device. Well, I don't. Maybe she does. All right, in the dungeon. Uh, maybe he can hide long enough to tend to the multiple injuries he has incurred. I feel bad for him. Vincent, maybe you and Mr. Livingston could find some safer work around the manor for him. You know, he's got a, a fairly easy job. If he just simply stopped teasing this one, then he would be left alone, would he not? He might be. No, she would never speak to him before. She still doesn't speak to him now, but she, she did not beat him before, so... All right, I fear one of these days he will lose a kidney or uh, another organ. Tangela is too skilled with sharp items. I can easily see her selling pieces of your favorite groundskeeper to fund the show. Hopefully this card does not inspire such behavior. Sincerely with ghoulish delight, Jason T. P.S. Please give these bandages to Andrew for obvious reasons. Do you send bandages? Oh, look at that. Oh, look, the pink. You know who's gonna take those is her. Thanks for writing, sir. That it? We have one more. One more? What is it? It's a letter from uh, Ohio. Ohio? You seem surprised that somebody in Ohio would write to us. I am. J.A. Kennard? Sounds right. Kennard? That means, that means uh, what does that mean, Kennard? In French? Yes. It means a, means a duck. False flag. No, it means a duck. It's a trick. No, I know what it means in English, but what it means in French is duck. duck. Come on. All right. So this is from J.A. Does he say the rest of his name? No. All right. Here we go. He goes, Dear Creature Features, I love the show. It's a lot better than Sven Gulli. Come on, rubber chickens went out with Steve Martin. You know... I've watched Svenguli, and he's, he's, you know, he's, I like him. I could watch Svenguli. You know, he's got a very colorful set. Look at what we've got, this drab manor. You know, at least they give him good lighting. Me, I'm, I'm stuck with my house lights. Vincent, never heard of your band, must not have been too good. <clears throat> Don't you dare agree with that statement. Yeah, she used to come to my concerts back when she was nice. And she spoke more often. Uh, but you're a good host for this show. Mr. Livingston, you need to listen to Vincent now and again. Or sometimes some of his thinking isn't that bad. See? I told you some of my thinking is not that bad. Okay. Now about the most beautiful girl in the world, Tangela. She should have a throne of gold, a crown of jewels, because nothing or no one can match her beauty. So please stop. I'm having trouble reading your writing here, sir. Bringing mean to her, okay? Being mean. Oh, stop being mean to her, okay? No, we're not mean to her. It's Andrew that says it's naughty all things to you. It's self-defense, actually. Right. Thank you, and uh, God bless. Well, God bless you as well, sir, and... Uh, now, she does not belong on a throne. She belongs in some form of incarceration. She belongs in a penitentiary. That's where she belongs. You know I'm right. Is that it? That was it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us a note of your own by email, send it to the address you see over here. If you'd like to send something nice in the mail, like finger puppets and bandages, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be uh, right back after the movie, but first let's get back to the Savage Bees. <laughs> Makes you nervous, does it? Well, you might say that. Yeah, most people feel that way about bees. It's been that way for a million years. Ever since the first man stuck his finger into a hive to get some honey, got himself stung for his troubles. Honey flow good today, Bill? Fine. That's yeah, a pity, really. People don't realize bees are the best friends they've got. You know, we send queen bees from here to every part of the country, repopulate the hives with them. Then their offspring go about the business of pollination. Of course, without pollination. Yeah, no crops, no food, I get that. After you, sir. You know, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Durant, from Jeannie. Oh? 
You don't seem to me to be a grade A dyed in the wool Rufus. Cinnamon. Rufus never had any doubt they would arrive. The question was when. We uh, have a videotape here which I've narrated in order to give the uninitiated some idea of what we're up against. Well, then you are prepared. I wouldn't say that, just forewarned. We had, however, hoped for a larger audience. Caution. The contents of this film are extremely sensitive. This material is not to be shown to the public without the written authorization of the National Bee Center. In 1956, scores of Brazilians were killed when they were attacked by swarms of the so-called Africanized bee. Dr. Jorge Miller, South America's leading expert on insect genetics, explained the bee's presence in the Western Hemisphere. The African bee was imported to South America only as an experiment. The attempt was to increase honey production by controlled breeding of the more aggressive African bees with a gentler Italian strain. Through an accident, the experimental colony was released and began uncontrolled crossbreeding with the South American bees. The African genes are very strong. The bees that are produced by the mating are extremely aggressive. I had no idea they would become as savage as they did. September the 12th, 1965, a swarm of killer bees invaded Rio de Janeiro. The final toll was 82 killed. A country farmer was assaulted so savagely that 80 bees were found in his stomach. A funeral party in Recife was assailed. 300 people were injured. 18 died. An experiment was established to monitor African bee behavior. Apparently, bees detest the colors black and red. The fury of the attack was recorded by a microphone held inside a black bag. Normal protective clothing did not ensure the safety of the cameraman and his assistants. More than 500 stings a minute savaged the bag in which the microphone was placed. The difference between the Italian and African bees is remarkable. Most honeybees attack only to ward off invaders. The Africanized bees attack when annoyed by color or sound. Once an invader has left, Italian honeybees will not continue to swarm in anger. African strain will pursue a quarry for as much as 24 hours. Well, with that film and the bee specimens, at least we won't have any trouble convincing the government. I'm afraid it's not that simple. There is no exterior way of telling the Italian from the African. We have to use a computer. Look, this is going to take at least an hour. Why don't you go into town and get some lunch? Hmm? The thing is, we don't want to alarm anybody. Then just what the heck are we doing? We're only going to suggest that people not take chances. There's a difference? We've got to know where those bees are. Now, you tell them if they see anything to give us a call, and we'll be there right away. And do what? You think I know? Oh, I'll just have the uh, mixed plate glass of wine and coffee later. Where's the swarm now? Well, as far as we can figure, about 20 miles southeast. Very close. Well, it's like the devil planted. it. Hmm? Uh, the bee center is the perfect ready-made breeding ground. That swarm must be destroyed to the last bee. I'll contact Jorge Muller. He claims to have a method by which he can neutralize the Africans. Of course, it'll be no use unless your sheriff, what's his name? Hugh. Yeah, unless he can locate the swarm. But I think he will. And I think when more people know about it. No, no, you, you, you must promise not to do that. We can't panic people. We're in something of a dilemma. If we frighten people, they're going to start killing bees indiscriminately, especially the farmer. He'll be worried that his animals, his family will be in danger. They'll burn the hives. There'll be less and less bees. Less and less food. Suicide. So what do we do? I don't know. If that swarm enters New Orleans, I mean, the city noise alone will set them on a rampage. They will kill every living thing in sight. Your city morgue won't be big enough to cope with the results. Now, these Africans are different not only chemically, but psychologically. They don't merely want to sting. They want to kill.
You looking for bees? Yes, ma'am. Well, you sure come to the right place, Sheriff. I got a whole bunch in the backyard. They've been driving me crazy all day. You mind if I take a look? No, you, you go right ahead. No, I mean from inside, the back door. Oh, I don't know. The, the place is a mess. I've yet to do the dishes. This could be an emergency, Miss Wright. Well, if you promise not to look close. Oh, thank you. They've been out there for hours. Could I use your phone, ma'am? Of course. Is that Jimmy? Yeah. Jimmy, go back. That's you, Sheriff? It is. Be careful of these bees. Don't come this way. Go back. See, Sheriff, you don't have to worry about these bees. You don't bother them, they don't bother you. Thank you, Miss Bryant. Them's not the bees you're looking for. No, ma'am. I guess they're just bees. And you can thank the Lord for that. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome back to National Geographic. We are watching a documentary on killer bees, right? This is true. No, it's, it's, it's almost like that. It's similar, except we show scary movies, and we have John Provost. 
formerly Timmy on Lassie. We never did a show with bees, I don't think. You should have done a, yeah. an episode where Lassie comes and gets help because you've been stung to death by bees. Well, not to death, though. Halfway there. Almost dead. Mm-hmm. It's a little late. Almost dead by Africanized bees, which did not exist in 1960. Whenever, yeah. Right. No, they didn't. No, but had hmm. you, the writers of your show might have conceived this. They would have been considered like trailblazers, right? Psychics. Psychics. Huh? Or psychos. One of the two. Anyways, uh, so in the movie, uh, they're worried about Mardi Gras. And oh, having Mardi Gras. bees yeah. when it should be... They're Lo- being worried about beads. The beads for Mardi Gras, of course. One should only worry yeah. about beads on Mardi Gras, not bees. True. That's enough. Anyways, so uh, what else is new? Well, Vincent, it's Tangella. Yeah. What about it? Well, the other night, my house was vandalized. Somebody egged it. And I know you Three have- eggs at your domicile. Yes. Right. All all over. Like and how many eggs? Dozens. Dozens of eggs. And I know you have a chicken coop out back. We do have chickens. Mm-hmm. I, oh, so you I suspect Tangella. Tangella. Yes, of course. Wealth. Dozens. You know, that's... I, I can understand your suspicion. However, mm-hmm. that's not quite her wheelhouse. What would she do? No, she would, uh, she would roll out her trebuchet... And she would have probably used bowling balls if she would, you know, she could hit your house from here with a true trebuchet. Wow. Catapults. Well, she, well, you live in this mansion. No, no, no. I I guess that fits, but. So I'm sure when she was a toddler, she would do things like egging houses. But uh, no, she's, she's advanced. Okay. She's she's quite ahead of this. Must like, be those other kids down there. It must be the other kids. Yes. Yes. Now, if she poisons your well. Or if you find like a horse's head, which she would not have removed, but she would have found on the side of the road. If you found mm. a horse's head in your bed one morning, that would be Tangella. And I would scold her mercilessly. You know that I haven't lived here that long, but it might be time for a move. For you or us? Well, I was considering myself. Oh, but yes. Now, well, you know, I've been looking at other homes just control her. No, no, this one's getting too small. Okay. It doesn't, just it doesn't have room her. for all my Lego creations. In any case, I'm getting the signal. We got to get back to the movie. When we come back, we're going to find out what uh, you're up to professionally besides doing voiceovers. So exactly. uh, stick around. We're going to watch this film some more. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk to John. Don't go away, please. Yeah, I know him. We really have to find him. What for? Who are you? I'm Pellegrino. Who are you? I'm Jeff Duran. I'm assistant medical examiner with the coroner's office. We have an emergency. Today? What difference does today make? Well, what kind of an emergency? It's about a swarm of killer bees. Killer bees? Take that stairway. I'm in 301. From the looks of the clothing and the general description, it could be that captain from the Carlina Rios. Well, let's find out. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'm just terribly sorry to disturb you at home. Oh, yes, sir. I can expedite it. All of it. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye. 
So, so we go with a clear procedure. It just so happens that we'd already set up for this particular situation anyway. You mean someone in the government actually got a jump on this? Yes, ma'am. Decisive action is very important in cases like this. Now, what I'll do is I'll get to working with the Department of Agriculture just as soon as I get all the facts straight and, of course, verify the source. Now, uh, your name again is... Uh, Jeanette Devereaux. I'm a graduate fellow in entomology at Tulane. And you, sir? Jeff Duran. I'm a research pathologist. I'm filling on, on weekends and holidays. Uh, you, you're the young man that turned in a report, but you're not actually a, a city coroner, are you? No, sir. Well, that could be a little problem there. Of course, I think I can take care of it. I'll just... I'll just tell X the appropriate authorities. Just as soon as I can, then we can get the proper authorization. Now, that hold it. We... Uh, hold it just a second. What are you talking about, tell X and proper authority? Well, you don't seem to understand. You see, I just can't take this on myself. To... What do you mean, can? I think you better. Now, wait a minute. Do you know who you're talking to? Yeah. I'm talking to a damn fool civil servant whose idea of action is to sit on his what damn... What do you want me to do? Run up and down a levee with a butterfly net in my hand? Let me tell you something, mister. Now, you want action? You go through the proper channels or you won't get it at all. Come on, Miss Comfort, get in. You know something's happened. No, ma'am, I didn't say that. Just come on and get in. All right. I know we promised Rufus. You know Rufus said about them bees. We're going to tell him what they do. We should give him a call. Yeah. Well, you, you know, talk to him. You do what you want. I want to talk to him. Do what you want. Dr. Rufus Cowder, please. Dr. Cowder. Rufus, it's Janie. Nobody in the city government will do anything fast enough. Jeff thinks if we're going to get any kind of results at all, we, we ought to make some sort of a public announcement. Janie, you mustn't do that. You promised me. But I'm trying to tell you that Jeff is convinced that if we're going to get any kind of results at all, we've got to give the story to the television people. I'm beginning to think he's right. Please, I've spoken to Jorge Muller. Richie, can you swing the camera down and set me up for an interview spot? Great. And tell the desk to monitor this. They may be interested in it. Yes. Yes, I'll meet Mueller. Flight 8, Air Brazil. Do you really think he's got an answer? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ready? Here we go. This is Mary Gordon, sidelight on New Orleans. With me today is Dr. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, could you give me Durant, a Durant. Jeffrey Duran, Dr. Dr. Jeffrey yes, Duran. Got it. Okay. Here we go. This is Mary Gordon. Rufus, I can't hear you. <laughs> With me today is the assistant medical examiner for the city of New Orleans, Dr. Jeffrey Durand. <laughs> Dr. Durand has come up with a rather startling story. It concerns the approach to New Orleans it's, 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 of a it's, 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 Did this man introduce himself as a doctor? I he am often a doctor. does that. I, I suppose he's told you a lot about bees, too. There are bees. I, I really think you'd do better not to listen to what he says. Jeff, Jeff, please. Wait. Dr. Mueller is coming in town from Brazil tonight with a solution. Are 
you sure? No. Cut it off. If those bees show up, head for the burner and get behind it. Yes, sir. Can you light up that fast every time? Yes, sir. Well, that's fine. Now, we're going to form a line and move through this field. And nobody do any talking, unless you got something to report. And don't panic at the sight of the first ladybug. And if we find... Whatever you find, don't touch anything until I get there. Is that plain? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go. So, Dr. Frankenstein is coming up from Rio to undo what he's already done. Maybe. I don't know, it's awful strange. I feel like we're going nowhere. I'll tell you how I feel. I feel in Yeah, well, me too. Oh, you're the most apt person I know. Yeah, that's a hell of a thing to say. It wasn't meant as an insult. Well, you should make it seem like one. Oh, we're fighting again? I thought we'd be fighting. We're not even talking. Well, what are we doing, Janet? What are we doing? Jeanette. Jeanette. Him anywhere, just the tractor down by the bayou. Why, well, Albert wouldn't ever. I'll get over there and take a look, ma'am. Is it true what we hear about the bees? Sheriff? Sheriff? Pretty soon we're gonna run out of jobs. Tell me about it. Well, at least you can call that Coast Guard lieutenant and tell him his men can have liberty. It's no rare disease. Just your standard death by bee sting. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Well, it's a seven-year-old girl that's on her way in. They headed out looking for another one. When I took this job, I never thought there was going to be overtime. 
How do you ever get into this line of work, huh? Uh, lucky, I guess. We got his footprints here heading into the river. We can work from here down. The tide's going that way. Did you see the bees that pull out that air cleaner in the tractor? I did. You got any idea what you're going to do if they come after us? I do. I am going in that water, and I ain't coming up till I get to Pensacola. Hello, my name is Linda from Napa, and I would like to know if you could show Horrors of the Black Museum. I believe it's from 1959. I would love to see it. Thank you. Bye. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com You know, bees killing children, uh, you know, that's where I draw the line. It's kind of like that movie, The Birds? The Birds. The Birds, like they attack the kids? No. Have you had any trouble with birds since you've lived in Bodega Bay? Mm, not really. Have you? No, I find them to be quite docile. Yeah. That, I guess that group left. Or that flock left, I guess. Yeah. I, I think we have a, a, a larger problem with slugs in Bodega Bay than we do with birds. There's Oh, those banana slugs. Are the banana ones? Disgusting. No, the banana ones and then also the apple ones are issues as well. That's they've been attacking my orchard. Right, yeah. right. So now maybe maybe because we don't have enough birds anymore that eat those animals. Well, so you were telling me during the break that there is an interview you recently did. Yes. For an upcoming film, which may yes. or may not involve our director, Tom Wersch. Oh, well, I think it probably does, but it's Up Late with Bob Wilkins. Up Late with Bob yes. Wilkins. And, you know, I mean, Bob Wilkins started this, like, right. in, in the Bay Area. And um, so, no, it's a pleasure to do it, yeah. So, so you were like a Hollywood superstar while this show was going on up here in the San Francisco area. Right. How did you see the show? I moved up here. Well, yeah, I, oh. no, I, I moved up here to go to college and just loved Northern California. And, and every uh, weekend we'd turn on late at night, college right. kids, Bob Wilkins, it was great. And Creature Feature. Yeah, right. that was so, so much fun. You, what year did you come up? Um, 1970. 1970. Yes, so it's oh, been quite so you a saw long the time. premiere episode, maybe. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. It was That's fun. Wonderful. That's wonderful. And here you are on Creature Features now. Again, well, it just goes. Well, you're carrying the torch. Now you know if Bob Wilkins had known you were so close, I'm sure he would have had you on his original show as a guest. <sighs> would have happened, but we can't turn back the clock now, can no. we? No. Nope. Unless we invent a time machine, right? I would go. Right, right. Yeah. So anyways, you've got this interview coming up, and yep. then uh, 
Tom's going to be releasing this film in February next year. Uh, next year. And it's going to be another Bob Wilkins yeah. documentary type fun film. Mm -hmm. And not just creature features. He's also doing uh, Captain Cosmic and then the other show he did in Sacramento yeah. as well. So it should be fun. Be fun. Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. Let's get back to this film. And uh, when good. we come back, uh, we'll chat some more with our friend John right. Provost. Let's get back to The Savage Bees. See you soon. they go for the mouth. Some swarms of Africans have such venom that I believe a man can be killed by as few as three stings. As you know, this suit was made specially to my own design. It's quite fantastic. A normal netting cloth unit is pitifully inadequate. They sting right through. Well, now, uh, my intention is quite simple. I shall enter the swarm. Enter? And I shall pick out the queen and replace her with a new queen. The new queen will gather the swarm around her. And when they hive and begin to breed, they'll eventually produce a new generation of hardworking, non-aggressive offspring. Now, wait a minute. I thought you came up here to stamp out this swarm. My dear Miss... Uh, Jeanette Devereaux. If you were to attack the swarm and kill the queen, it would simply disperse. These killer bees being genetically dominant, I believe, Dr. Carter, 
that just a few refugee bees in this center could mean the Africans would cover America by oh, as early as September. Still there? I told them they'd have to wait. Gentlemen. How's it going? Ah, uh, fair, I guess. We've been hearing things. Rumors, wives' tales. Is there a bunch of killer bees loose in the parish? That's right. Where are they now? Last place was near Casio's. After that, we're just guessing. What are your plans? There's a man who's come in from Brazil. He's going to do something with him. We're talking about evacuation. There's some hard decisions got to be made. People have to be taken care of. I doubt if there's... Because if those bees cut loose, everybody in this parish is going to go across that river at the same time. We, we thought that we ought to, you know. Yeah, I know. And I'm willing to give you gentlemen of the council priority. Because when those bees cross that water, and they will cross it, I can't think of anybody I'd rather see standing on the opposite shore. Turn. Yes, sir. Show these gentlemen out the door. And if they don't disperse within five minutes, run them in for loitering. Yes, sir. One of these days, McHugh, you're going to go too far. <laughs> I probably will. But it'll take a better man than you to tell me when that is. Well, I can leave if you want. Now, that's some entrance line. May I ask why I am being so singularly honored, sir? I'm sorry. I'm scared. Well, why do you think I'm here? I have to go out and see McHugh and get organized for tomorrow about some crazy scheme I don't have the slightest faith in. And you want to hold hands? Something like that. Took a swarm of killer bees to bring you back. It took seeing you again. To credit the bees, if you want. No, thank you. I refuse to be grateful to a bunch of bees. Was that actually meant the way it came out? Warm and pleasant? Yes. Come on. All right. of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best.
Am I home? No. Eva? My wife's mad at me, and the city council's gonna have my job. Now, what do you want? I just want a cop. Over there. You want a drink? No, thanks. Well, I just sent in another victim. Albert Casio. Farmer. Good man. That red pen up there? Maybe. Shouldn't be too far off. Don, they'll cross that bayou. They will? There's a field planted in flower. It's on Hooma Road. If I was a bee, that's where I'd go for breakfast. I'll start there in the morning. Are you trying to think like a bee? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, that's about 30 miles from Bee Center. Like they're heading straight for it. You know, it's like I almost knew it was there. Yeah, my pa used to say there's good in every situation for somebody if you looked hard enough for it. I wonder what he'd say about this predicament. Well, maybe it takes this sort of thing to get people thinking about other people. Everyone or everything being in the same boat. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do you? Yeah. You mean there ain't no damn bees gonna get the best of us? I'd like you to meet Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller, this is Jeff Durand. Doctor. Yes, hello. Oh. Are we all here? Come a little closer. Uh, you each have radios, and you've been given the sectors you'll patrol, all right? Now, I'd like to urge you to be very careful of any undue noise. The Africans are extremely sensitive to vibration. In the event you are attacked, your vehicles are the safest place. But remember to close all vents instantly. Ms. Devereaux and I will remain here in readiness for the sighting. I'll expect each of you to report every 15 minutes. Thank you. Still going to levy. I'm going to 
don't see a thing. It's Jeff, Dr. Cowder. We're on Bohemia Road. And we got nothing. Give them time. Time. In one hour, B can fly 10 to 15 miles. We're faced with a circle. Which can get only larger and larger. Get in. Not bees. That's for sure. Think we should take a look? This is McHugh. Jeff? Dr. Catter, have you got anything? I uh, just have a... Uh... That chicken, Sheriff, with a with a red cap on it. Anything else nearby? Oh, yeah, there's a strange symmetrical design in the grass. Don't touch anything. It's all sacred. It's a veve. A uh, what, Sheriff? It's voodoo, Dr. Cowder. Uh, anything special we should do? Nothing. Leave it be. We need all the help we can get. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, John, if you had hair like mine, <laughs> you could play rock and roll. I, I guess I could. No. Except he, I'm, I'm not musical like you. He rocks either way. Oh, well, no, thank you. You're like a rock star. And sometimes yeah. that's better than being an actual rock star. Air guitar. Being like a rock star. I can star. do that air thing, you know. You know they have schools well. for air guitar. I'd go. But you have to bring your own cylinder of air to fill them up. It's like a balloon. Okay, right. we can do that. So uh, you were chatting us up earlier about uh, this film that you did voiceover on called Cologne. Cologne is a robot, yes. You are a robot. I'm a, not, I don't have arms and legs. Do you remember um, Castaway where he had a friend called Wilson? Wilson, the, yes. the, the bull. Yes, well, that is Spark. Oh. And Spark floats around. Oh, nice. And, yeah, and he, his eyes are his expressions. So, as you're recording these lines, do you see, like, on a screen what is happening no, in the film? No, not, not when I was doing this one. Um, 
but in I had done a couple other voiceovers. I, I was actually uh, for Christmas cartoons. So this is not yeah. the first time you've done. No, voiceover. No. But the first time I've done a robot. And you've done Christmas cartoons. Yes, I was. Oh, in, I, I was an elf. I want a gig and, like this. And I was I was a reindeer. A reindeer. I can see you as different. an elf, but I cannot see you as a reindeer. I and they actually could see the cartoon when so, you were taught. Yes. As you do it, and yeah. you have to like follow lips. Yes, but when I was the robot, since he didn't have a mouth, I didn't have to look. But maybe yeah. he's got like the squinty. It's his, it was his eyes. His his eyes are the expression. So. But they if, don't squiggle when you speak. They. Yeah. Move a little bit. They're that. They're the expression. No, I always yeah. wondered with animation if they do the mouth moving first, or do they record and then match the mouth to the audio? I don't know, but that reminds me of some where they. It was cartoons, and but the mouth was real. Do you remember those? Oh, that was. Uh, that was spooky. No, yes, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, clutch cargo. Yes. Yes, that was. Oh, clutch, that was so weird. It was. But imagine, I, no. imagine the money they saved, not having get, to with, flip all those true. images for the mouth. Well, it's like with this movie, they you know used non-union bees, so it was easy. Well, you know, I think some of these bees are not real bees. I think some of them yeah. might be flies. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah that's it's what they Hollywood. do. They cheat all the time. All right, what do you say we end this film? Okay, good. Yeah. When no, we come I didn't back, end that. we're going to find out what you're doing next besides avoiding Tangela at all costs. Right. Right. All right. You guys stick around. We will see you on the other side of the film. Don't go away. in there. We're out on Peninsula Road. There's a hot dog stand. I know it. Go ahead. The swarm is inside. Dr. Mueller says he wants all cars kept out of the area until he gives the word. He says he wants the roads blocked. Will do. Oh, please wait for the others. No. You'll start the car and take me there. Close all the windows and all the vents. When I give you the signal, turn off the engine and coast as far as you can. I shall walk the rest of the way. You understand? Yes. Under no condition are you to get out of your car. Let's go. towards the door. What are the bees doing? Not much. 
He told me they don't mind silver. It's the colors black and red that set them off. Marty, come on! Hey, Phil! What do we do? Sheriff said not to let anybody in there. Now, I know that. You want to go after him? No way. Call the sheriff. You really think we ought to? I'm... What can he do anyway? Well, I'll call him.
Jenny? Can you hear me? Jenny? Talk to me. The beads are all over the car. My windshield is covered. I can't. Jeff, what do I do? Well, don't panic. The cars are tight. I'll think of something. Yes? <laughs> sure? How do you get those flamethrowers? We can't do that. This swarm would disperse. If they got to the B-Center, we'd have killers all over the country. Maybe all over the world. As long as that swarm is viable, every bee will stay with it. So we got to keep it together. Well, what are we going to do? Well, you could freeze them. What? Freeze them. Bees become immobile at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If you could drive that car somewhere... Or... We could drive it inside of a refrigeration plant or a packing plant. No, that's no good. It can't already be cold. The bees hate the cold. They fly away. Wherever we go, it'll have to cool down after we get there. Also, it'll have to encompass the entire swarm. I mean, some of those bees are 50, 100 yards from the center of the swarm. Great idea, Rufus. I don't think there's anywhere in the world like I'm describing. Hell, there isn't, Doctor. Aren't you a Saints fan? A what? <laughs> We'd have to drive the car right through the center of town. I mean, the noise, the motion, the bees would fly away. Hey, you're crazy. You haven't got a prayer. Prayer's exactly what you have got. This is the quietest day of the year in New Orleans. I, I don't understand. It's Ash Wednesday, Doctor. Sheriff, call ahead. Jenny? Yes? How much gas you got? Um, uh, about, about, about a quarter of a tank. Okay. Now, don't open up anything. Don't turn your air conditioner on. Just start your engine. Turn up your radio for a minute. We want to get those bees mad at you. Oh, God, I can hardly see. Try your wipers. Um... <laughs> Drive, Jenny. Fifteen miles an hour. We'll escort you. You follow us. Can you do that? Um, I'll try. Where, where are we going? We're going to Superdome. This is Livingston. And you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Get in here. Come on, right now. Get in here. We have an emergency. 
You are in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. Get off the street. Attention. Attention. We have an emergency. You are in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. I repeat, kill a bee. Any loud noise can arouse them. Absolute quiet and necessary. You're going just a bit too fast, Jenny. Slow down. We can't afford to lose one single bee. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, Lump, that's fine. Catch it. Catch it. We have an emergency. You are a danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. I repeat, clear the street. Catch it. You are a danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. We are coming through with a swarm of killer bees. I repeat. We're almost there. I'm going ahead to get the door open. Wait, wait. 
Hold it, hold it. Wait for stragglers. Make sure they're all inside. Okay, left now, Jenny. Okay. Just hold on now. Oh, God. Oh. All right, close the door. Close. Is the cooling system up to full? Yes, sir. Sixty-one degrees. We want it down to 45 degrees. Can you do that? I don't know, Sheriff. Well, that's all we can do. That temperature's going down now. Just hang on. Is there any lag in the reader? I don't know. Never got it this cold before. <laughs>
Jenny. Jenny. I sure do want to thank you, sir. And that is the end of the Savage Bee Saved by the Love Bug. Yes. Great ending. No, I, I think, you know, of all vehicles they could have used, that was the best one because it's a bug, right? And the a bee bug is a bug. And 45 degrees, right? So. Yeah, I don't know about the 45 degrees part. Is this Fahrenheit or Celsius? Have not a clue. Probably, well, it was in the, I would say it was probably Fahrenheit. What did you think of the film, love? She, you know, she likes bees. No, she uh, keeps okay. bees and not like a real beekeeper where she wears a beekeeping suit and they have the boxes. She keeps bees in her room. Yeah, she does. She, she thinks if she keeps enough bees in her room, they'll like make honey on the walls or something. All right. Well, with her, you never know. As lovely as she is, she's a slight bit naive, just slightly. Anyways, uh, what's next with you? What's up? Well, um, the new Colonial movie, going to be right. working on that and promoting. You've and got to promote the film fun. so people yeah, go see so it. Looking for that. Right. No, no, no. That's going to be fun. And yeah. uh, perhaps, uh, you know, one day when you do another cartoon, we could come see you actually do it, right? And see how okay. the process works close up. And uh, what else? You. You're selling stuff because you sold the Timmy stuff, right? Oh, yeah. From Timmy you know, and well, I, I have a website. It's johnprovost.com. Johnprovost.com. You know, from the Lassie thing. Everybody John is loves spelled Lassie. spelled J-O-N, right? Yes. And, you know, nobody ever came up and said they hated Lassie. So. No, everybody loved Lassie. No, it's you that they did not like. Lassie was fine. Right. I, I are, just. Are, are you sure you're not talking I about just, someone else? No, no, no. Everybody loved Timmy. Who could not love Timmy except for? No, she actually likes it. She only abuses people that she likes. It's a true story. Oh well. All right. Anyways, thank you so much for volunteering to come up and well, be our guest. Uh, volunteering, I don't. Think. Tonight, sir, and you you stepped in for like bigger shoes, which is nice. And uh, as far as you guys go. Thank you so much for watching our show tonight. It was so fun having you in the mansion with us. Next week, uh, what do we got going on next week? Yeah. It'll, it'll be something fun. And uh, our guest will not be John, but it'll be somebody almost as impressive. And uh, we will see you next week. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. And don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, John, this thing about you considering moving away, I hope you, this, you won't consider that. I'd stay if... She left.